Steve, we know that the diversification of the chip supply chain has also been a key uh, issue as well, right? We're hearing now that Micron might benefit in terms of these incentives from the Japanese government to make next-gen chips in Japan. Yeah, I think this is one of the most significant and interesting parts of the G7 right now. Clearly behind the scenes, uh, there is an effort by the United States and other G7 members to diversify supply chains, to make supply chains in high advanced semiconductors a priority, de-risking, if you will, the risks associated with having so many of these high-end chips made in Taiwan. I, I point to the Warren Buffett disinvesting its entire stake, a Berkshire Hathaway stake in Taiwan Semiconductor, not because Taiwan Semiconductor is a bad company. In fact, it's a great company, he says. It's just the location that is a big risk, being Taiwan. So what we're seeing is a big push for Japan to take up that slack. It's an ally, of course, uh, with the United States and is on board with the supply chain resiliency within the G7. So this story is important, that Micron technology, we're hearing from sources, as Kishida, the prime minister, meets with the Micron head, meets with TSMC and other chip makers here in Hiroshima, his hometown, at the G7, on the sidelines of the G7, to offer incentives up to, we're hearing, 1.5 billion U.S. dollars for Micron to bring ASML, EUV, that's extreme ultraviolet lithography technology that is unique only to ASML, high-end equipment to Japan for the first time in a plant that Micron has here in Hiroshima. That's on top, by the way, down in, in Kyushu, down in southern Japan, in Kumamoto, TSMC is in the midst of building its own high-end chip factory right now. So that move to de-risk the Taiwan element to Japan is really running strong.